I'm going to summarize some of the main points of this critical review article published in the open access journal Neurosci. To start with, we need to consider the definition of mismatch negativity, which is obtained using an auditory oddball paradigm. The blue line here represents the eventilated potential, or ERP, in response to a 100 milliseconds standard tone that has been repeated many times. This is typically derived from frontocentral EEG in humans, and different peaks are labelled according to polarity and time. So we've got the P50, which is a positive peak at roughly 50 milliseconds, N100 and P200. In red here is the ERP response to a deviant sound, which is physically different from the standard and played infrequently and unexpectedly. Subtracting the standard ERP from the deviant ERP produces a negative peak, which is known as mismatch negativity, or MMN. This review concerns theories that explain this difference. We'll start with the deviance detection theory, which is very popular. We have auditory input. The brain extracts the physical features of this sound and represents them together as an abstract auditory object. This incoming auditory object is then compared with an expected input generated by a predictive model. If the incoming auditory object is similar to the expectation, repetition suppression occurs, where the ERP response becomes smaller and the model is reinforced. Alternatively, if the incoming auditory object is sufficiently different from the expectation, a change detection me mechanism is triggered, and then that causes the predictive model to be updated. So it is suggested that mismatch negativity reflects the deviance detection part of this process. While this is an interesting theory, other factors are likely responsible for differences between standard and physically different deviant ERPs. Here we have ERP responses to two different frequency sounds. We can consider the last stimulus of the same frequency to be like the standard, and the first different frequency stimulus to be the deviant. The fresh afference theory suggests that the mismatch negativity can be explained by differences in the responsiveness of auditory neurons that react to these different frequency stimuli. This causes the ERP to a repeated stimulus to become smaller as these neurons get fatigued. This is also known as adaptation or repetition suppression and is incorporated into the deviance detection theory after it was proposed. Another theory, which is very simple, is simply that low-level features of sounds fundamentally shape the ERP waveform. The onset response is modulated by stimulus frequency, intensity or loudness, and interstimulus interval, while the offset response latency is determined by sound duration and its magnitude is influenced by sound intensity and the duration of stimulus on time. Control sequences have been brought in to validate the deviance detection theory. According to this theory, the mismatch response can be split into repetition suppression, shown by the difference between the standard and the control, and deviance detection, shown by the difference between the deviant and the control. However, according to the sensory processing theory, the differences between standard and deviant ERP responses is due to low-level differences in their physical makeup, while control sequences are inherently confounded by adaptation or changes in the response due to time and repeated exposure to sounds, given that the auditory system is known to be highly dynamic. Let's now take a look at the origins and progression of mismatch negativity research. It was introduced by Natanen in 1978 and described as a measurement of sensory memory violation. Although more recently this terminology has been changed to keep up with the predictive coding theory of brain function. And MMN is now referred to as a prediction error signal. However, it should be noted that this is just a change in the terminology and the methods and results have not substantially changed over this time. 
This pie chart represents the literature about MMN published between 1981 and 2021. The different segments correspond to authorship. So Natanen published 8.8% .8 of the literature, while his co-authors published 29.9%, and their co-authors published a further 23.8%. This analysis has been extended, and I've found that from 2,900 papers, there were a total of 6,459 authors. Over 4,900 of these were found to be related to Natanen through co-authoring relationships. And in total, this group was responsible for over 80% of the published literature in this field. This is not conducive to open science because by default, the deviance detection theory has been assumed in most of these studies to be responsible for differences between standard and deviant responses. And there haven't been sufficient methods of controlling for physical sensitivities or adaptation of the auditory response. Abnormal mismatch negativity has been linked with a multitude of conditions, typically using null hypothesis statistical testing and subsequent meta-analysis. The main issue here really appears to be a lack of specificity which might challenge the effective use of MMN as a biomarker. MMN research suffers from some problematic technical limitations, including inherently low signal-to-noise ratios, experimental and analytical flexibility, which is undesirable and, and provides sources of confirmation bias. The passive oddball paradigm is also confounded by the use of physically different stimuli the low-level features of which have a pronounced effect on the event-related potential. And control sequences cannot discount the dynamic effects of adaptation. Despite these limitations, the deviance detection theory is frequently assumed in studies of MMN. To summarize, ERP responses are fundamentally shaped by the low-level features of auditory stimuli. Control paradigms that have been designed with the purpose of confirming the deviance detection theory do not remove adaptation or physical sensitivities from influencing the auditory response. Ultimately, purely sensory processes can explain mismatch negativity without the need for more elaborate hypothetical mechanisms postulated by the deviance detection theory. There's a lot more information in this article, which is open access, so if you want to learn more, you're more than welcome to read about it.